time. I'm, ju I'm just going to recap for the recording for posterity. We called the meeting to order at 7.08. The secretary took roll. I had informed the committee that headquarters had updated the committee page with 99.9% .9 of our requests. And I think that was all. The next thing that was on announcements on the agenda was to remind everyone that the town hall meeting is tomorrow. Supposedly headquarters is going to send an email out tomorrow to members about it. I'm disappointed it didn't get sent out earlier. I did put the request in two weeks ago, but again, I'm not in control of that. And I do understand that there is a strategy behind how often they hit the email list and there's metrics and, and things like that involved that have to be taken into consideration rather than just the committee's desires. Um, so I'm not so sure. And if it doesn't go out tomorrow, there will be nobody here. But I was promised by Tyler that it should go out tomorrow. If, we'll see what happens. I encur I encourage everyone to share it on their social media because even if we only have a couple of members who come, um, those discussions are worthwhile. It just will not be as long as it, it usually is. So we are now at the point of opportunity for public comment. It does look like there are some members of the, the public here, at least one member of the public here, but also if there's any members of the committee who would like to say something that more properly belongs in public comment, I see Mr. Seebeck's hand raised, Mr. Seebeck. Yeah, it's just um, an apology in advance. I'm getting notifications here that my connection is unstable. So if I come across as choppy, I apologize. If I fall off, I apologize in advance. I'll do my best with it here. Okay, and, and um, I'm gonna get the name. Hold on, Cashado. I could have to think. I shadow. Mr. Cashado is here. Um, who, if you do drop off, can temporarily um, step in. Um, the one guest I I saw was Nick, and I'm not going to mangle your last name out of respect. Um, if you have any comments that you would like to direct to the committee, um, this is your opportunity. Please don't feel obliged, but if you do, this is your opportunity. Okay, seeing none, we'll get to the first item on the agenda. Again, I'm going to presume there'll be no objection to continuing our practice of the approval of the minutes on the email list. Mr. Secretary, I hope you saw my email from earlier. The minutes folder in the committee folder, I know I'm using folder multiple times, only has minutes up through the 20th. And I really would like to update Elpedia. And I think there's been a few others that have been approved. If you could please, please upload them to that folder so I could update Elpedia, I would greatly appreciate it. Yeah, I started to before the meeting and I just got to double check that I have everything there. So it'll be done by tonight. Okay. And the other thing I, you asked, the other thing you asked for as well is also done. The okay, filling thank in you. Names. Oh, okay. I even for, I didn't even check on that yet. Thank you very much. Um, and just so you know, I, I not trying to just not trying to ride your tail on the minutes. It's it's for LPD purposes. All righty. First thing up is a proposal from Mike Seebeck. And I don't know if you, yes, you do have that on the screen. I'm trying to organize my screens here on my laptop. The first one up is Agorism, New Plank 2.15. It would be if passed. And if passed, it would read, we affirm the right of individuals and businesses to subvert state regulation, taxation, and restrictions enacted by executive order through black and gray market activity, so long as such activity does not violate the individual rights and liberties of customers or community members through theft, fraud, or violence. Um, before I give Mr. Seebeck the opportunity to speak to this, I would like just to give a little bit of historical context. Um, this plank originally appeared with mostly the same language in the Libertarian Party of Minnesota's um, platform 
I believe they passed it two or three years ago. Colorado saw it and it's now also, I think this is the exact language that is in Colorado's um, platform. So it's two state parties at least um, have adopted this language, but Minnesota, as far as I know, is the first one to do so. Just wanted to give you the historical context where this came from, Mr. Seebeck. Um, I don't know if you would like to speak to this at all, and I'm going to um, just unplug my headphones a moment so I can shut the door since Wayne isn't here and grab a soda, but I'll be listening. Did we lose Mr. Seabag? Okay, I, I do apologize for the dropout there for a second. Okay, um, this is kind of taken almost verbatim from Colorado's uh, platform. We passed this recently. Um, I do have a proposal to amend this though to try to simplify it. Okay, um, that would be in order, Mr. Seabag. And he just left. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. My connection keeps coming in and out. Um, <laughs> hey, Mike, are you able to okay, call I, in? I need to ask, what did you guys number? hear me say last? <laughs> we, I heard you say last that you have a motion to amend. Um, okay, that's kind of where it dropped. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I call these on help or not, because that's on the same Wi-Fi. Um, Proposal to amend is as follows. I'll make this quick. Um, the the before individual rights, delete that. And then also the clause of customers or community members, delete that. I think of, I think I'll simplify it down. So it would say violate individual rights and liberties through theft, fraud, or violence. Correct. Okay, thank you, um, Mr. Seabeck. Mr. Brown. Uh, yes, I actually agree with the uh, uh, motion and the amendment, but I do have a couple of quick things. Uh, first of all, gray is G-R-A-Y, but what I wanted to ask was a question is uh, when it's talking about um, um, subverting state regulation, et cetera, enacted by executive order, uh, what about state regulation, taxation, and restrictions enacted by legislation or by administrative agencies? I'm sure, why is that being uh, separated out? Obviously, we don't agree with any of it. So I just wanted to ask, uh, was there, is there a reason for that, or should we amend that also? Well, let me I ask... I would defer Madam Chair on that one. <laughs> and let me ask one question first. Because that one amendment Mr. Seebeck seemed to make, which simplified things, I could be mistaken. I think it's, on. even if people are gonna end up not supporting the proposal itself, I think that amendment is relatively uncontroversial. Is there any objection to Mr. Seebeck's simplification amendment? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't see the amendment. I was gonna ask. Um, okay, no, Mr. It's, it's right below, um, it's right below uh, for, First is item C, and then the second is the amendment by Seebeck where he just struck out a couple of words no, to it's simplify not, it. It's not on the screen yet. Um, Mr. Seebeck, I mean, uh, Mr. Ricciro, yes. the amendment would be to strike the word the before the phrase individual rights. Okay. And? And strike of customers or community members. Okay. So that it would read, we affirm the right of individuals and businesses to subvert state regulation, taxation, and restrictions enacted by executive order through black, black and gray market activity, so long as such activity does not violate individual rights and liberties through theft, fraud, or violence. So with the amendment on the screen, which was a simplification and reducing um, some words, is there any objection to that amendment? 
Okay, seeing none, we're back to Mr. Brown's request for information. Could you please restate that, Mr. Brown? Uh, yes, I was wondering about why we're just uh, picking out executive orders without also talking about all the regulations, taxation and restrictions enacted by legislation and also by administrative agencies. My understanding, I'm thinking back to when this was proposed and argued in Colorado is that that was felt that that was covered under state regulation and taxation. You know, I'm kind of skeptical because it seems like uh, we're saying, well, uh, obviously we don't really believe in executive orders, you know, passing laws by executive order, but it would seem like we also don't like these particular regulations when they're passed other ways also. So I think this would be confusing uh, for the public. Are we only do, we're only urging people to, or uh, saying people have the right to uh, do these things you know, when the bills are passed or when the law is passed in a certain way. So uh, I'm not sure how to phrase that, but I, don't, I think this is gonna be kind of confusing to the public here. Madam Chair. Um, well, Mr. Brungart was up next. I had you after Mr. Brungart, Mr. Enzor, did you have a privileged motion or request? No, no, I just, I thought I could answer um, <clears throat> Mr. Brown's uh, con concern because I think what he's, it's just a dis disagreement over what the grammar or syntax of the statement is. But if, it, if it's out of order, then I will wait my turn. Mr. Brungart, would you object to Mr. Enzar skipping ahead of you to answer the question? That's fine. Go ahead, Mr. Enzer. So by the sound of it, what he means is that um, <clears throat> state regulation and taxation are, are themselves uh, set, listed as separate, separated by commas. And then the last part was restrictions enacted by executive order, as in the enacted by executive order part would be applied to the restrictions. If I'm understanding uh, the chair, Yes, and I'm not going to make this amendment um, or I'm not even suggesting it. I'm, I'm, I'm throwing something out to Mr. Brown. Would it, because somebody else may wish to make this, would it solve the issue if the sentence read something such as we affirm the right of individuals and businesses to subvert the state? through black and gray market activity. That seems to cover everything. Well, actually uh, someone put up something uh, in the chat about uh, changing and to or, which actually would make it make more sense. Uh, and because I didn't, wasn't reading it that way with the and. So I would say just to change and to or, right state regulation, taxation or restrictions enacted by executive order would solve the problem. So I would, I would move that simple uh, amendment. Okay, thank you. So Mr. Brown is moving after the word taxation where the word and appears. To Can somebody strike. who's got background music go on mute, please. Yeah, there's like a banjo, not a banjo, that's the wrong thing, like a, a lute or something is going on in the background. And while it's very pleasant and medieval. <laughs> I apologize. I didn't realize I was not on mute and that's my dad doing his guitar lessons up on the second floor. No problem. Um, so Mr. Brown is moving after the word taxation to strike the word and and insert the word or so that it would say state regulation, taxation, or restrictions enacted by executive order. Is there any objection to that amendment by Mr. Brown? Say it again, Madam Chair. Uh, just after the word taxation, where it says and, change the and to an or. The word taxation, change and or. And the first, okay. yeah. give, me, give me just a second. All right. So, okay, seeing that. no objection, Mr. Brungart. Yeah, I'm not sure I need to. <clears throat> I'm not sure I need to make the motion that I was going to now. I think it, I think that handles it. 
Okay, thank you. Mr. Enzer. So I was um, going to motion an amendment of my own. I put it in chat. Um, I think you're, I thought you were um, on the right track with saying um, subvert the state as in so, something overall, but I think we do, because agorism is a, is a more specific uh, application of libertarian activism. So I thought, I thought it would be good to su substitute for subvert state economic trolls. Is that an amendment you are going to make? I, I would like to make that amendment to substitute um, state regulation, taxation, or restrictions by executive order and substitute that for state economic controls. Okay, so you would be, um, I'm, I'm repeating this both for yourself to make sure that I understand and for the secretary. You are moving to strike state regulation, taxation, or restrictions enacted by executive order and instead insert state economic controls. That's correct. I first had heard you to say state economic trolls, and I was like, hmm, putting trolls on our platform would be very interesting. I think Mr. Brayman heard the same thing because. I tried I to think keep that's my face for somewhere else in the platform. <laughs> yeah. I kept my face in passive, but I will have to say in my mind, I was thinking, I'm not so sure that was a good idea. <laughs> okay, would you like to speak to that, Mr. Enser? Yeah, um, I just thought like um like the others were saying, maybe um listing some things off would be uh would be helpful, but it doesn't necessarily cover everything. And sometimes we could get bogged down in the language. And by the same token, uh, what you said before is correct about we're subverting the state, but it's also a little more, um, it's also a little more specific than that. So I thought this was a better um, happy medium, so to speak, where we're still covering everything that agorism does, but just being specific about what it's doing. It's subverting state economic controls, like all economic controls. Can, if the committee will permit me to ask you a question, um, because this just might be a misunderstanding of my part on agorism. Um, what, doesn't agorism also include subverting state social controls? Um, I will confess that I'm not the most um, knowledgeable of agorist theory or agorist activity, but my understanding of it is that it's talking about acting, um, do, it is about building, <clears throat> excuse me, is about subverting the state through counter, through counter economics, basically building alternative economic processes that doesn't give taxes to the state or pay fealty and developing it to the point that it supersedes the state, which the feasibility of that, I'm not necessarily sure about, but I think that as far as whether it's permissible under libertarianism, I think it's 100% permitted. So I, so that's what I, um, <clears throat> that's what I was going for. If somebody who's more knowledgeable on agorist theory and agorist activity thinks that I'm being needlessly limiting in what I proposed, then let me know. No, I, 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 now that you've explained it, I think you're correct. I think, I think I was misunderstanding in that the social things are social things that you exchange money for. So I think actually, I was thinking more along the lines of prostitution and things like that. Um, okay, uh, Mr. Alfstad. Oh, I, uh, I don't so want to speak to this amendment. amendment. No, yeah, so can I, I, can I wait till I get back to the main? Yes, I will put you on my other side list here, but if I forget, please poke me. Mr. Right, Brayman. Yes, I think this uh, particular amendment gets rid of too many uh, suggestions of specifics. Uh, I was kind of surprised that Mr. Brown did not move simply to uh, eliminate the words uh, enacted by executive order, which I think would have uh, taken care of 
the uh, problem of being too specific on re uh, re the restrictions clause, uh, because state restrictions can be enacted by legislature, and we're seeing it in New York State. Uh, we've got about you know uh, 50 pages of restrictions on marijuana sales and, and whatever that are, are being passed along with taxation and regulation. And it's just insane. Uh, and I know a lot of people who want to subvert all of the above um, and would be and, uh, attracted to the idea of subverting regulation, taxation and restrictions, but wouldn't quite know exactly what subverting economic controls is. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Brayman. Mr. Seebeck? Um, yeah, I don't like this amendment either. Um, I could argue that, um, well, I, I understand what I said earlier. I think I, I agree with it about how taking the executive orders part out would also broaden and simplify the issue. Um, there's also state social controls. Um, are you wearing your mask? Perfect example, which has nothing, which may or may not have an economic impact. Um, social distancing, a lot of garbage that we've gone through the past two years. So I think the argument, whilst looking at agorism, it is primarily economically based. There's also a thing called profitable civil disobedience that Kronkin talked about, which had to do with um, basically using that type of social activity to uh, say, screw the state. So I, th I think economic is too limiting because there's more to state regulations and restrictions than just economic. Thank you, Mr. Seebeck. I have Mr. Cholko. Thank you. Um, I, it, it, would it be in order for me to move an amendment to the amendment? It depends on what it is. Strike the word economic? Yes, that would be in order. Okay, so I'm going to move that now. And essentially, Mr. Seebeck just made the whole case. So he can repeat all that stuff if somebody wants to hear it again. So Mr. Secretary, what Mr. Choco is proposing is in the amendment to strike the word economic so that it would read if, you know, in the amendment, we affirm the right of individuals and businesses to subvert state controls through black and gray market activity. So as long as such activity does not violate individual rights and liberties through theft, fraud, or violence. So we are now on the secondary amendment or otherwise known as the amendment to the amendment of striking the word um, economic. So that is what we are speaking on from what I understand, Mr. Choco does not wish to speak further. Um, Mr. Alf said, you're still on the primary, correct? Mr. Brungar? Yeah, I, uh... <laughs> I now think that controls is not broad enough. So I think having the words, uh, at least having state regulation and, and taxation, um, somebody could, even though they'd be wrong, could make the argument that taxation is not a control. Um, yeah, so I, I don't think controls is broad enough now. So uh, I disagree. Yeah, I'm just looking at this. Because I see where some people are wanting to go and I always like to try to advise people whether I agree or not how to get to where they want to go in case that's where they want to go. Um, and I really have nothing to say because um, we are really deep into it. So we will see what happens here. Um, is there any, Mr. Choco? Yeah, I was just gonna say on, on, on striking economic, I just kind of threw it out there. Because I'm not sure that I really super strongly support it. I'm not sure that I support the underlying amendment either. I'm just kind of threw it out here to see if people like it. So, you know, it, it looks like there's not too much to say about that. So if we could just try to move to a vote on that one, we can do away with it and, you know, move on. Madam Chair, good question. Yes, Mr. Ricciaro. Um, In the original proposal, we were striking, you know, 
the tax regulation, taxation or restrictions, right? And so we've moved to an amendment of the amendment. If we go to a vote, we, we would be voting on just striking economic or the rest of the text there. Hold on. Are you saying that I went three levels deep by accident? Oh, I don't know. I'm looking at it now. I'm wondering myself. Um, I don't think so. A scroll up, please, a little bit. No, I did not. Okay. So here's where we're at. If we defeat striking economic, economic controls will be the next amendment to replace regulation, taxation, restrictions, or restrictions enacted by executive order. I would agree. So all we are, the, 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 the immediately pending vote is whether or not to strike economic from the second from from the amendment of economic controls. Negative I have Mr. Mr. Chelko. I, I think that's a legacy hand. Okay, Mr. Ensor. I wouldn't. <clears throat> I wouldn't object to uh, striking the economic from it. I was just, I just figured I would, I would speak to it if that's in order. Um, I just thought that what we had before was necessarily limiting. So I, I guess I was just kind of confused by people saying that it's what I proposed was still um, overly limiting because the main motion, I was trying to expand on what, what was listed there. So, I mean, I'm not, I, I would, uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm just a little bit confused. I apologize. Well, this is how we come to um, better proposals. I will throw out there again, because I know what everyone is getting at. I do think, I think we have two theories of thought here. One is to detail out things, and one is to just be very broad that would adequately encompass the things we are um, detailing out. And in my personal opinion, and if somebody wished to move this, if they agreed, I will not be making any amendments, is I think if you want to go the simple route, the way to do it is to simply say to subvert the state without any qualifiers. And if that's not what you want to do, then you need to list things out. To me, that seems to be the two options that won't lead us down rabbit holes but perhaps somebody else has another idea. I just do want to um, throw that out there that if you wanna go simple, just saying subverting the state, as long as you're not violating rights is about as simple of a libertarian statement of agorism as I think you can make without detailing things out. Um, so we are now, if there's no further debate or discussion on striking economic, is there any objection to striking economic? Okay, hearing none, economic is struck. Now, what we are on is whether or not we should strike regulation, taxation, or restrictions enacted by executive order and replace it with controls. And on this, I know there's debate or at least disagreement that will require a roll call vote. Is there further debate necessary? Okay, Mr. Secretary, um, we will be doing a roll call vote. Again, what we are voting on, a yes vote would strike out regulation, taxation, or restrictions enacted by executive order and instead simply put in the word controls. A no vote, would leave in regulation, taxation, or restrictions enacted by executive order and controls will have been defeated. Are we clear on what we are voting on? Okay, Mr. Secretary. All right, uh, I'm gonna leave it on the screen for everybody to see. Gary Al said. Aye. Okay. Mark Raymond. Nay. Ted Brown. Aye. Joe Brunghart. Aye. Matt Choco. Aye. Ken Matz. 
Aye. Josh Nichols. Aye. Luke Enzer. Aye. Omar Okoro will abstain. Uh, Mike Seebeck. Abstain. Curry Taylor. Abstain. John Thompson. Aye. Okay. Ballot number two. Madam Chair, uh, if we didn't miss anybody. Uh, Mr. I'm... Secretary, uh, Sean Dempsey uh, did not vote. Ah, New Hampshire is here. How do you vote, sir? I vote nay. Uh, yeah, keeping the blue. Okay. Okay, so we have eight in favor, two opposed, three express abstentions. Okay, that passes. And when you're ready to switch the screen. Yeah, one second. Okay. And I'm just waiting for you to get it. And Mr. Alvstead will be first since we are back on the main motion as amended. And I'd like to read it before we continue with debate. It would now say we affirm the right of individuals and businesses to subvert state controls through black and gray market activity, so long as such activity does not violate individual rights and liberties through theft, fraud, or violence. Mr. Alvstad. Yeah, I'd like to move to strike everything after the word market activity. So you would like to strike so long as such activity does not violate individual rights and liberties through theft, fraud, or violence? Correct. Okay. Do you understand the amendment, Mr. Secretary? Say it again. So we're striking everything after market activity? Yep. He wants to put a period there and strike the rest. Okay. Would you like to speak to that, Mr. Alfstead? Yeah. Um, not because I don't agree with that part of the statement, but I, that's in our statement of principles. Everything we do, we, you know, is, is always limited by the fact that you can't you can't violate someone else's rights and liberties. And there's just no need for us to continually say it in, in every plank. I'm going to give some editorial commentary for one moment. This has to do with ordering our proposals. If we pass, this argument has come up several times. Um, in multiple planks. Um, I'm thinking one, even in immigration, the same point had come up about peaceful. And it, I think it'd come up like three or four times where there's an overarching understanding throughout our platform that obviously anything we're advocating always carries the PS as long as you're not violating the liberties of others. We have a proposal um, in our emissions plank um, that says something to the effect of, in every matter, we adhere to the consistent application of the non, basically it states the non-aggression principle. I don't remember what the exact wording is. If we end up passing multiple proposals in which we've struck in language like this, in our ordering, we may want to consider putting that omissions ones toward the top because it will help me as committee chair if the question comes up to point to, look, our platform starts with the statement of principles that says this and ends with the omission plank that bookends it and says it, and it will make it a much easier argument. This is, a, this is an editorial ordering decision. I'm not saying whether we should strike this or not. I'm just putting that out there for the committee to think about our strategy in presenting our proposals. Um, Mr. Alfstead, did you wish to speak further? Uh, no, thank you. That, that's all. Okay, Mr. Seebeck, Mr. Enser, then Mr. Dempsey. Okay, I, uh, I'm against this amendment, and I'll tell you why. Our political opponents will, will find any opportunity they can to cherry pick 
anything they want from our platform to try to use it against us. Taking this clarification clause out gives them a silver platter opportunity to do exactly that. And I think leaving it in there, even though it may be repeated elsewhere in the platform, does add the emphasis that we're talking about respecting individuals while saying screw the state. Thank you, Mr. Seebeck. Mr. Enser. I just wanted to <clears throat> add some food for thought on, on this proposal. Um, because we're talking about agorism specifically, I think it's note, noteworthy that in agorist theory, they, it's, they classify five different types of market activity, uh, white, gray, black, uh, pink, and red. And it's the pink and red ones specifically that involve uh, violating other people's rights. Um, so in, ter in terms of agorist theory, this would be somewhat redundant. And I, I kind of get where um, <clears throat> Mr. Alvstead is coming from with, with regards to um, it also being redundant from being described in our platform elsewhere. That said, I know that um, colloquially, black markets are not necessarily thought of as being uh, nonviolent, we'll say. And um, <clears throat> I don't necessarily think that we should care too much about the fact that we'll be cherry picked because we're going to get that anyway. And I think even with that clause, we run that risk, but it could help mitigate that. So I'm personally undecided. I just wanted to put out some food for thought for either side of this. Thank you, uh, Mr. Enser. So you are saying that my hair is uh, potentially violent. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, actually I am. <laughs> I think there's might be some members of the LNC who agree with you. Um, Mr. Dempsey. Yeah, I won't speak on to the amendment. I'm, I'm actually fairly ambivalent. I, I actually just have a point of clarification. The point was mentioned earlier about changing the spelling of gray to the proper spelling. Is that something we're going to be making or does an, an, an amendment need to be made to do so? Well, both you a deadhead or not? <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am probably both fine. I'm very curious if the Chicago Manual style has anything to say about this because G R E Y is actually a correct spelling of gray. I have an African gray parrot, and that's how it's spelled. Um, but I, our style guide for the party is the Chicago Manual. Um, Mike, I know you have a copy of that. Uh, would you care to just take a look to see if it's even mentioned in there? I'll go find the doorstop and look. Um, G R E Y I, is British English. G R A Y is American English. It makes no difference to me. Um, I do think A Y is more common. Um, so that's a that's a, a style thing. Um, can I suggest to the committee that we discuss this if the proposal actually passes? No. Agreed. Okay. That's fair. Can't discuss it at all. Okay. Um, and I have you down. Uh, so Mr. Dempsey, did are you waiting until after the amendment is disposed of? Yeah, I'll, I I'm fine with that. And it doesn't really matter to me either way. I was just kind of curious as to a point of whether or not a spe spelling issue is something that can be debated or discussed in the middle of a, an amendment, which is more of a point of clarification than anything. It really can't, um, but it is something I think at the end we can make a decision on if we actually pass it. I just think spending time on the spelling, if it ends up failing to begin with is not the best use of our time, probably. Agreed. Um, I will withdraw the question. Forgive me. Thank you. Oh, there's, there's no forgiveness necessary. Believe me, there's all, a lot more egregious things that happened in this committee. Um, Mr. Cholko. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of put out a reminder because it's come up a couple times here about, you know, agorism and various definitions. We're not tasked with making an agorism plank. We are tasked with 
proposing or amending a plank period. So we can name it agorism or not. If it if agorism doesn't, you know, that, that title doesn't fit what we come up with here. But I, I don't think that we should limit our work because this original language was proposed with the title of agorism. Um, it's fine to discuss it, but I don't I don't like the idea of using that to kind of limit the language that we use in our in this proposal here. So I just want to remind everybody of that. Okay, thank you. And just to, though agorism is, the name agorism is part of the proposal as it is right now, but of course the name is open for amendment as you are, as you have stated. Okay, would anyone else like to speak on the amendment of deleting that last phrase beginning what so long as? I'm going to ask, is there any, uh, there is, Mr. Seebeck had already objected and I'm assuming that objection remains. So Mr. Secretary, when you have a ballot ready, we will be voting on this amendment. A yes vote will strike that last phrase so that the proposal will end with the word activity and strike the rest of it. A no vote will leave so long as such activity does not violate individual rights and liberties through theft, fraud, or violence. Are we clear on what we are voting on? All right, Mr. Secretary, whenever you are ready. Gary Offset. Oh, I. Okay, Mark Brayman. No. Ed Brown. No. Joe Bronhart. Abstain. Uh, Matt Choco. Um, pass. Sean Dempsey. Aye. Ken Matz. Nay. Josh McHose. We lose Josh. I don't see him. Oh, I see him right there. Come back. Luke Enzer. I abstain. Okay. Uh, I will. Omar Recur will vote aye. Uh, Mike Seebeck. No. And Curry Taylor. Abstain. Okay. John Thompson. Uh, mm. Nay. Okay, coming back to Matt Choco. I'll, I'll abstain. Okay, and Josh McHose aye. still here? There you go. Did you want to vote? Uh, aye. Okay, I had missed you the first time. All right. Madam Chair, I, if I didn't miss anybody, where are we at here? I show... Four in favor, five opposed, four express abstentions. What was it again, please? Four in favor, five, ex okay, four in favor, five opposed, and four express abstentions. Okay, so my vote would not make a difference one way or another. All right, so that fails. And we are back when you can put the screen. Okay, so that last phrase remains. Uh, Mr. Dempsey, I had you on deck first once we were back to the main emotion. I should have lowered my hand and I will do okay. so now. Mr. Seebeck? Yeah, I looked it up. Um, CMOS 7.3 says the following. Non-US spelling. In English language works by non-US authors that are edited and produced in the United States, Editors of Chicago generally change spelling used in other English speaking countries to American spelling, e.g., color, O U R, to color with no U, analyze, Y S C, to analyze, Y Z E. Since consistency is more easily maintained by this practice, few authors object. In quoted material, however, the spelling is left unchanged. Right. So it looks like if this so passes, AY is the correct one. If it passes, it'll be A Y even though yeah. I utterly reject that and use British spelling and everything because I have oppositional defiant disorder. 
All right, would anyone else like to speak on this? Mr. Taylor. We're back to the main motion, correct? Yes, we are with that phrase intact at the end. Okay, I'm gonna give my short little speech um, on this topic. Uh, I, can't, I, I feel the wind and I think this is going to pass, but I want to kind of give my thoughts on it just for posterity. Um, I, I talked about this in the on the mailing list. Um, I am sympathetic, the concept of agorism. I've practiced it myself in the past. I'm sure many of you on this committee and you won't admit to doing it, but but, but you probably have yourself. Um, this topic though, to me, is something that is outside of the scope of a political party's platform. And here's the reason why. Algorithm is going to happen no matter what, if you're gonna, if the state says you, you cannot subvert us, well, we're gonna subvert the state, are gonna do it anyway. Um, if the Libertarian Party says, you know, you cannot, you, you are supposed to subvert the state, or we encourage you to subvert the state. Well, people who are gonna probably don't uh, care what, what we have to say about it. You know, it's, it's an action, outside of the political realm. Um, so um, I have a, uh, Mr. a, Taylor, a certain- uh, Mr. Taylor, I believe you're a bit choppy. Um, I don't know if there's anything you can do with your connection. I'm seeing comments and I believe okay. that's what the point of personal privilege that's being raised is that they're having yep. difficulty. Yes. I apologize. I, I don't know what to do about it at this, this time, but I, I, I I will try to comment in the chat about what I'm trying to say. Um, Maybe turn your video off to dedicate your but, uh, bandwidth to, to audio. I'm not, I'm not certain how what what to do about that right now. Um, I I will summarize in the chat, but I just wanted to say that it's hard for me to see this as a political platform. If if this does pass. I won't lose any sleep at, at night, trust me. Um, but I'm gonna have to vote no because I just don't see, I, I really tried to understand the people who said that they, they wanted to uh, run on a platform which has this, uh, you know, as a candidate, um, you know, championing this idea. And I think that that's fine to do. I just can't, I can't bring myself to see how it fits inside of a political party's platforms so let it let it fall out it's going to and i think i'm going to vote no thank you mr taylor mr ensor so i actually wanted to uh respond to mr taylor's um <clears throat> statement which despite his choppiness i'm pretty sure i got the the gist of and um i wanted to speak in favor of the motion anyway and this is just a good opportunity to do so so <clears throat> the libertarian party as I understand it, mainly ex the primary purpose of it is to advance libertarian ideas and strategies for achieving liberty are part of those uh, are part of those ideas. And and he's correct that agorism itself bil builds itself as an anti political um, activity, and it it is by design. But it is still an activity that is being used to advance libertarian ends, or at least ends compatible with libertarian ideas. And what we're here to do is to publicize and bring awareness to libertarian ideas through political action and enact them if, po if possible. So I think it it is compatible with our mission to, as a party, because it's educating the public about the fact that this is real. This is something that can be engaged in, and it will happen with or without uh, us talking about it. But I think us publicizing the ideas of it could help it happen more, which could do more to undermine the state. And I think that's a good thing. So I think that it is 
um, a good idea to publicize this as just a strategy that we don't necessarily engage in ourselves, but it is a, a nonviolent subversive activity that we do support and people should be more aware of. Thank you, Mr. Enser. I have Mr. Recuro, and then I added myself, and then I have Mr. Dempsey, Mr. Recuro. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, I'll just follow with what Mr. Curry was saying. I mean, what Mr. Taylor was saying, that um, it's a fun little topic to talk about, and we all engage in it. I know I do, all the time. So, um, again, doesn't belong in a political party platform. Uh, Mr. Taylor has said this before, and I actually want to quote him. I'm sorry I'm picking on you, Curry, but uh, our platform kind of serves um, like three things, the public, our candidates, and the party. And when I have to make a choice as to who it should serve primarily, I'm going to choose the public and our candidates. And this serves really just us. It's really just a fun thing to have in the platform. So I'm going to be voting no on this, but it, it's been a good discussion. Um, thank you, Mr. Secretary. I'll keep my comments brief um, because it starts to impact, whenever it impacts history, I feel compelled to speak. Um, the party was founded as an anti-political party. We're a political party who's an anti-political party. And to continue to say that something's outside the political realm to me is a feature and not a bug. And this is simply an extension of our stance on victimless crimes. We're not only are we saying that there shouldn't be any laws against them, we're also saying we affirm your right to engage in them. And I do think it is important to validate the many people who are making their livings this way. Um, there can be a lot of shame in this. And as libertarians, um, while there might be certain industries we don't morally approve of as individuals, most of the stuff that's going on under black and gray markets, we don't really think there should be shame under. And I'm gonna give you an example in Castle Rock, Colorado, which happened during the mask mandates, unfortunately, something that was a regular market a restaurant had to turn around and operate under cloud of illegality. And what happened when the state came and shut them down is the community came out and taped $20 bills all over their windows to keep them in business. The time hasn't been more right right now to encourage peaceful, um, peaceful resistance against the state. And this is what this is. And as a pacifist, um, I love it every time we can encourage peaceful revolution. And that's what this is all about. So um, just historically, I wanted to bring in the fact that it's not a typical political thing, I think is very ahistorical to what this party has stood for. Thank you. Mr. Dempsey. <laughs> wow, ask me to follow that, Madam Chair. Um, well said, I actually was gonna make many of the same points you just did, but probably not as eloquently, and I'll just leave it at this. Um, I was speaking in favor of the amendment as, as written. I feel that um, any, attempt to divorce the philosophy of libertarianism from the party platform or the party of libertarianism is a failed exercise. It's, it's, it, we are an antithetical um, party. We are, we are speaking out against the regime. So language like this, I feel, is very affirmative of that. And it embraces the sentimentality of um, of, uh, of, the, of the free marketplace of agorism, which I think, again, philosophically belongs within libertarian ethos, whether or not, you know, we agree on the party um, and how that, how that plays into it, I think is maybe a matter of debate, but um, I think as written, this really represents the, uh, the sentiment of, of the majority of libertarians, and I, I fully support it as written, and I think it's a great addition. 
Thank you, Mr. Dempsey. Mr. Seebeck. Yeah, you guys are not going to like this much, but I have another amendment to propose to this, but it might just uh, simplify it a little further. This was something that uh, Mr. Clayton proposed, uh, put in chat. I'm going to put it out there for the seat to see if, if, if it'll float. Um, move to amend to strike the words of individuals and businesses. So that it would say we have so the the amendment that um, making sure the secretary understands and the rest of the committee. Mr. Yeah, he has it correct. Okay, so um, <laughs> for the committee to understand, Mr. Seebeck is moving to strike of individuals and businesses. So that if adopted, the plank would read: We affirm the right to subvert state controls through black and gray market activity, so long as such activity does not violate individual rights and liberties through theft, fraud, or violence. Would you like to speak to that, Mr. Seebeck? Um, yeah, real, real briefly, I think just by taking those, uh, those words out, we don't lose any context of what we're talking about, but it actually makes it a little, little bit easier to read. That's it. Okay, thank you. Would anyone else like to speak to the amendment? Seeing none, is there any objection to the amendment? Seeing none, the amendment passes. We are back onto the main motion, is which now reads, because I do like to keep repeating things so that people understand where we are at. So now the main motion is we affirm the right to subvert where state controls through black and gray market activity. So long as such activity does not violate individual rights and liberties through theft, fraud, or violence. Is there any further debate on the main motion? Okay, seeing none, I know there is objection. So Mr. Secretary, a roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Dempsey? I, I guess my question, point of clarification is what does this add or remove from the heart of the amendment. I don't, I don't fully understand. Okay, the amendment passed without objection. Um, so we're now back on a main motion, which is as worded on the screen. Yeah, I guess the question, I'm sorry, was more for the, the, the maker of the motion. I don't understand why this would add any anything to the original motion, or it seems like it only subtracts from it, and I don't fully understand it. And I would probably be voting. Uh, okay, no. I think there was a misunderstanding, so we are going to go back to that amendment because perhaps I was premature in saying it was without objection. I think I think that Mr. Dempsey was was away from his computer when we passed it without objection. Okay. I believe I just saw him sit back down. Okay, so. I'm going to, unless somebody objects and calls a point of order, I am going to say that my calling it without objection was premature as Mr. Um, Dempsey um, did have a question for the maker of it and perhaps may object to deleting that phrase. I do call a point of order. This is dilatory. Who is that please? Mark Brayman. Okay, Mr. Brayman um, believes that the chair um, is incorrect in going back and reopening the question after um, saying it was without objection. I find the point of order not well taken. Um, I will defend my position. Um, miss, uh, I'm, I might not defend this well. In the black letter of the law, Mr. Brayman is correct. My overriding concern as chair, and I'm a bit of a Roberts heretic when it comes to this, is equity and fairness. And um, I believe Mr. Dempsey was genuinely confused as to where we were at and didn't realize what was going on with that amendment. And that as a committee, um, I would prefer to err on the side of giving everyone a voice 
if they're genuinely confused. I don't want to punish people for genuine confusion, but I do not want to reward genuine dilatoriness either, but I do not believe Mr. Dempsey was being dilatory. I will not speak last on this, but that is all I will say in defense of my, of my, um, of my ruling. Um, would anyone else like to speak on my ruling? Or I would. Against? This is Omar. Yes. Um, Madam Chair, I, uh, you know, I share, you know, you know this about me. We, we both share a very common mindset on, on Roberts and whatnot and in procedure. And I have to say right now, I find myself in agreement with Mr. Raymond that the vote was maybe for a different reason. I feel like it was clearly stated by you and you've been very uh, diligent in that throughout this entire committee to make sure that everybody understands where we are. And so I feel like going back uh, in this particular case is out of order at this, at this time. So that would be voting to overturn the ruling of the chair, not sustain the ruling of the chair, right? Okay, thank you. And I uh, just want to affirm to everybody that there never is anything personal here if people do not agree with my rulings. Um, would anyone else, uh, the motion on the floor right now is shall the ruling of the chair be sustained? Um, that is the question on the floor. Um, would anyone else like to speak? I, I, I just have a, a question. I mean, this whole thing is essentially pointless, right? We could have just voted this through it doesn't matter which way we go on the ruling of the chair. We're going to spend five, five times more time on this discussion than we would have just moving forward with it, I, I think. Can Nothing go. actually changes except we're going to vote on this thing and pass it possibly with one no vote. All right, let's just vote it. Well, there has been Man. no an appeal from my ruling, um, unless that appeal is being withdrawn, we do need to follow the process. May I, may I make one statement? Yes, Mr. Brayman. Uh, I feel that we have spent an hour and 10 minutes on this one amendment, uh, making the, the tiniest fine detailed changes. And this is keeping us from getting to other things and that deprives other people of rights that are important as well. Uh, with that said, uh, I, I think it's very important when people try to, to disrupt the flow and aren't stay, stay, staying in their seats to take part in, the, in a discussion that that is particularly unfair to the other people who are waiting to get on to the next thing. However, that said, I will withdraw my objection, my appeal. Is there any objection to Mr. Brayman withdrawing his appeal? Mr. Seebeck, is your hand raised for an objection or was that to speak? It was to speak. I was just going to say, I'm willing to answer his question without any problems. Okay, since there's no objection to withdrawing the appeal, Mr. Seebeck, if you could answer Mr. Dempsey's question. Um, could you restate it, please? <laughs> sure. I'm sorry for, I didn't realize it would create such a I'm happy to move on uh, in the sake of brevity. But my question was just, I just didn't understand how at removing those the, the words that were uh, stric stricken out in red um, was additive to the original motion. And forgive me again for the uh, disruption. That was my only question. Okay, well, uh, Mr. Chokel pointed this out in the uh, chat and so did Clayton that um, it would expand um, expand and beyond individuals and businesses to groups. Clayton just said the right to subvert the state, which actually is broad enough in its own right. Um, so by moving to strike out individuals and businesses, it opens up a little more to be not just individuals and businesses, but also to be other types of groups as well. So it, it broadens it enough to be more to be more inclusive, so that's where the that's where the added part comes into play. Thank you for the explanation. I'm 100% on board. Plus, it simplifies the language. <laughs> okay, so you no longer so do you withdraw any objection to that amendment, Mr. Dempsey? No, I, I'm sorry, I never had an objection. Okay. I was, just, I was a okay. simply a, a question. That's why I was. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to move on and vote in affirmative of this. Okay, awesome. We are back to the original motion. Is there any further debate on the original motion as amended, which reads, we affirm the right to subvert state controls 
through black and gray market activity, so long as such activity does not violate individual rights and liberties through theft, fraud, or violence. Okay, since Mr. Taylor did um, express an objection earlier to the main motion, we will go to a roll call vote. Mr. Secretary, whenever you are ready, a yes vote would adopt this with the title agorism. I wanna make that clear because that was brought up earlier um, as a new plank 2.15 and a no vote would defeat it. And we would move on to the, either way, we'll move on to the next agenda item. Hey, give me just one second, Madam Chair. I had to rename the ballot like five times. Uh, adopt the main motion. I think you should just name it Fred. <laughs> okay. Um, we lost Mr. Alstead. He announced that he was leaving in the chat. So, and I don't see anybody else in California here. So we'll start with uh, Mark Brayman. Aye. Okay. Mr. Brown? Aye. Okay. Joe Brunhart? Aye. Matt Toko? Aye. John Dempsey? Aye. Ken Matt? Aye. Josh McHose? Aye, sorry. Okay. Uh, Omar Ricardo votes nay. Uh, Mike Seebeck. Hey. I didn't catch that, Mike. Sorry. Aye. Aye. Okay. And Curry Taylor. Nay. And John Thompson. Aye. Okay. Madam Chair, I'm showing here. I think you forgot me. Uh, I did forget, Mr. Enzer. Sorry about that. Pennsylvania, I skipped <laughs> right over you. How do you it's vote? All good. Well, I vote aye. And I had you right there, too. I totally skipped you. <laughs> all righty. Um, Madam Chair, I show 10 in favor, two opposed at 10 15. Okay, we are moving on to the next item. The next item is a proposal from Mr. Brayman. And I'll just give you a moment to get to the screen. Okay, let me pull up Mr. Brayman's uh, text here, right here. And Mr. Brayman, I did have a question for you, even though it says new, new number to be determined, um, am I correct in assuming this would be in platform section one? Yes, I don't okay. know where the numbering needs okay. to be at this point. So but right I, now it would be one point X, right? Um, as we did with some others that we didn't know the number yet. Yes. Okay. So the new Brayman proposal, one point X, entitled "Adult Rights and Responsibilities," which would read: Once individuals are presumed to have adequate judgment to vote and to serve on a jury or in the military, they should also be presumed to have sufficient judgment to decide their own purchase and use of alcohol, tobacco, firearms, cannabis, and other potentially risky activities. Mr. Brayman, would you like to speak to your proposal? Yes, please. Uh, this was one of the most popular uh, planks that our New York State Platform Committee proposed uh, to our uh, uh, state committee uh, which nevertheless said that we should defer to the LP National Platform Committee. We um, have talked about this. There's, a, you know, there's nothing else in any part of our libertarian platform saying when adult rights begin. Uh, we believe that all rights emanate from the right to vote and that uh, the Libertarian Party also benefits from uh, appealing to young people uh, that they should have full rights when they have the right to vote. Uh, we focused here on uh, serve on a jury and the military as well. Uh, if you, uh, we say elsewhere that there should be no age discrimination, but we, we make no uh, clarity about when that age discrimination might begin. Uh, we, we say elsewhere that 
uh, parental rights include the right to control their children, their families. Uh, it's important to state that uh, there is a, a, a minimum age at which adult rights and responsibilities begin. I would like to say that uh, I have also even just recently, uh, two hours ago, uh, read this platform plank to a, uh, not just read it, but actually texted it to an undergraduate at Syracuse University from where I'm speaking right now, an undergraduate who is a history and a political science major. And his response to it was, uh, uh, let me pull up the text. Uh, 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 oh gosh, I, uh, I've lost it, but it was, it was like uh, something like very perfect. Uh, we, uh, we really need something like this. Thank you. Okay, I have Mr. Rakuro, then Mr. Seebeck, then Mr. Choko. Okay, uh, yeah, so my question, Madam Chair, and is uh, looking at uh, one one, and I'll put the platform, put the plank for everybody to see one one self ownership. Um, I, and this may be a question for Mr. Brayman. Um, how how is this different than one one here? Individuals own their own bodies, have rights over them, over individuals, and it finishes with you know they knowingly and voluntarily consume and what risk they accept to their own health, finances, safety, or life. I I. I I kind of like the text um, of what you're of what you're proposing. I'm just kind of wondering: is there really a difference between that and one one, or per, or perhaps maybe adding this language to one one somewhere to make to strengthen one one? Thank you. May I respond? Madam Chair. Um, I'm sorry, yes. I, there was a slight distraction here. May I respond? Yes, sir. So uh, one one actually contradicts to some extent the parental uh, rights plank elsewhere, which says that parents have the right to make decisions about their, their children. So uh, that implies that parental rights implies that, that people who are under the age of 18 do not have all of those individual rights that are specified in 1-1. Uh, the question is, what age do, do, does someone become an individual with those rights specified in 1-1? Clearly, our platform does not give all those rights to someone who is a minor. Uh, so I think it's important uh, and potentially very valuable to, to make it clear that, that adult rights and responsibilities begin at a certain minimum age that we are defining, we are willing to define, and not leave vague. Does that answer the question? Oh, yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Brayman. Okay, I have Mr. Seebeck, Mr. Choco. Um, yeah, I got two questions. One's technical, one's more in depth. The technical one is, should that be purchase says plural in there? And then the... Uh, the, the in-depth question is, was this, when you guys came up with this, and I, I, I don't know the history, so this is a genuine question, uh, was this based on an economic perspective or more than that? That's all I had. You can, you can answer that, sir. It was certainly based on perspectives from every which way, not purely economic. Uh, right to control bodies, right to, right to control uh, uh, health care, their own health care, right to control uh, their smoking cannabis, right to purchase tobacco. Uh, these are big issues for students on this particular campus and everywhere else that I've ever uh, gotten a chance to talk uh, to students. I have 20 nieces and nephews. They think that uh, laws that uh, restrict uh, these activities to people uh, uh, beginning once they're 21 are just ridiculous. Uh, I certainly uh, had the benefit of being, when I was 18 year old, considered an adult uh, back in 1975, 74. Uh, I, I see no reason why that was uh, changed. We could, uh, based on the average uh, brain function of people of a particular age, we could deprive people above the age of 90 of any of these rights uh, 
and it would be just as justified. Uh, it's ridiculous that we uh, deprive people at the age of 18 of any of these rights uh, as a presumption. What, what was the other one about the purchase? Uh, purchase and use. Use is singular, so purchase uh, I made, we made singular as well. Uh, I did not see that, thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Choco. Thank you. Um, so in general, I, I, I'm kind of undecided on whether or not I support this. I, I, I think in theory I do, but you know, it gets into age of consent in general. And, and in some senses, I think that whole, that whole concept is, is illegitimate. And I'm not sure that I like kind of calling it out here. Um, but I, I do agree that we certainly shouldn't be limiting people that can serve in the military and, and we trust these other things. We shouldn't be limiting them from anything else. Um, but anyway, that, that's my general thoughts on the, on the motion. I am going to offer an amendment here. It's, it's in the chat. It's the last statement I made in the chat um, to, let me see the, from, from the, the and near the end of the sentence, uh, we're gonna strike other potentially risky activities and add the words, engage in other age-restricted activities. Okay, let me see if, <clears throat> could you please restate that? Cause I am not sure I understand your- uh, I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it in the chat again right here. So it's at the fresh in the chat. Okay. So instead so that's, that's of- That's how the sentence will end, the, what I just put in there. Yeah, what Curry just put in there. Okay, so strike and other potentially risky activities and instead insert and engage in other age restricted activities. Yeah, I think technically we're not striking and or activities, but yes, that's getting us there, right there. I think, I think age restricted should be hyphenated. Um, age hyphen restricted is what you're saying? Yeah. Do you object to that, Mr. Choco? I'm not sure. Is it materially different? I don't think it is, right? So if it, I, just, I want it whatever way is grammatically, just grammatically accurate. Yeah, I think per um, the Chicago manual, that is uh, Mr. Yeah, well, C. Whatever, that, you know, however, I want it correct, grammatically correct. Okay, so the amendment on the floor is to delete and other potentially risky activities and instead insert and engage in other age restricted activities. Um, hold on, Mr. Cachado and then Mr. Taylor. And Mr. Cachado took his hand down. Do you still wish to speak? Uh, I'd like to speak to the main motion when it comes back around. Thank you. No, okay. I, I didn't, I don't, I don't think I spoke to my- Oh, you amendment. didn't, you didn't. I. I I, I get flustered every time I see Mr. Cachado's name up there because I get stressed that I'm going to have to pronounce it, Mr. Choco, <laughs> and then Mr. Taylor. Yeah, I, I don't need to say a lot. I think it's it's pretty self-explanatory, but I, I just the, the potentially risky doesn't matter to me whether the stuff is potentially risky or not. What matters is that that we are letting adults have all of the rights. It, 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 they're able to do anything when they're adults. So. Once you're an adult for one thing, you're an adult for everything, R risky or not. Thank you, Mr. Choco, Mr. Taylor. Yes, I'm in favor of this entire um, uh, motion. And I'm also in favor of Matt's improvement here for, of the, the language um, because it, it, it's more accurate as far as gr grammar is concerned. The engage in is critical here to differentiate it from purchase of. Uh, however, um, I understand what, what Matt wants to say as f the word age restricted because you want, you want to bring it back into being non-restricted, but we're calling out things that are traditionally restricted and we're saying they shouldn't be restricted now 
anymore. So they're, so <laughs> we've kind of circled back to uh, calling out something that's restrict, restricted that we shouldn't, we, we think shouldn't be restricted. So it's the wrong term, I think, but it's the right idea. Um, I don't know if someone has an improvement to think of for that, for that phrasing, but. If I understand you, Mr. Taylor, it's almost like affirming an age restriction while denying an age restriction. Exactly. Just, yeah, it's just throwing something out there. Would adding the word currently before the word age restricted help at all? May I make a different suggestion? Sure, Mr. Brayman. Um, in the actual uh, wording that we used in, in the New York State platform, we referred to them as adult activities. Um, although some people objected to that with the sexual connotation of it, uh, that avoided um, implying that, that um, there's a specific age, but uh, adult is relevant. I, this came, this uh, shortened version came from a, a somewhat longer amendment that included both of these arguments, both that uh, the argument, both an attempt to address the issue of risk which is the justification that is usually given for uh, uh, restricting the age. And it also, uh, in our wording, attempted to, to basically say there is no activity that uh, an adult that should be uh, blocked from someone who is already doing these other things, like serving in an army voting. I, I'm fine with any wording. I'd just like to see if we can pass this today. <laughs> okay, Mr. Rakira. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you know, I'm looking at this and thinking about it and thinking about it in a couple of different ways here. And I'm starting to think that I like this language. However, I wanna keep and other potentially risky activity. I think it would sound better if we said firearms, cannabis, or other potentially risky activities and engage in other age related restricted activities or maybe even strike the first activity. Um, I kind of final, I kind of wanna find a way to keep the potentially risky part uh i mean that's just where i'm at so i mean but i i do like this additional language hmm i don't have an amendment to propose but thank you um mr kiro i'm just again throwing something out there just hearing what you're saying not agreeing or disagreeing but a way you could possibly do that is an other age restricted or potentially risky activities. Just throwing it out there, Mr. Seebeck. Uh, yeah, just point of information. I need to step away for a moment, so I'm deferring my uh, point to Mr. Uh, Clayton. Okay, I see you're just as scared of his last name as I am. Um, Mr. Brayman. Uh, that was not intentional, sorry. Okay. Okay, we are still on the amendment of striking and other potentially risky activities and instead replacing with and engage in other age restricted activities, Mr. Rakiro. Okay, so going with your suggestion, Madam Chair, we would say and engage in other age restricted or potentially risky. Would that be in order to add? Or it would be in risky? order as an amendment to the amendment? Yes, it would be. All right, let me get that on screen. I'm, I'm, I'm moving that, so move. Okay, so Mr. Ricciro is uh, moving to add the phrase or other potentially risky before the word activities in the amendment, and it will be up on the screen in a moment. Would you like to speak to that, Mr. Rakura, once you're done with your um, I, I, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. And um, 
Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. I think I think it gets the point across a little bit better. Yeah, at least I hope it thank does to, to the other members of the committee. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Would uh, Mr. Choka? Sorry, I didn't want to speak on the new amendment. Okay. Would anyone else like to speak on the Recuro amendment of adding or potentially risky into the primary amendment? I'm assuming your hand is up as a legacy, Mr. Recuro. Would you like to speak further? Oh, let me put my hand down. Okay. Apologies. Is there any objection to adding or potentially risky to the primary amendment? Seeing none, that amendment passes. So we are back now on the primary amendment as amended, which is to strike and other potentially risky activities and instead insert and engage in other age restricted or potentially risky activities. Mr. Taylor. I will move to strike age restricted and insert uh, adult in, in place. Okay, the movement, uh, the movement, the motion that Mr. Taylor is making is to strike the phrase age restricted and insert the word adult. Would you like to speak to that, Mr. Taylor? Yeah, I, for the, I, I don't think age restricted is the right word. It's the right idea, but it's self-contradictory in, in the, the way that I mentioned before. Uh, we don't want to acknowledge that these restrictions should be restricted in the first place. And so, but we, we do when we use that word. And so uh, replacing it with another word um, is better in my opinion. Okay, Mr. Choco. Yeah, so when, when my hand was up last time, I was I was going to offer this amendment prior to the Requero amendment, but I don't think it works very well now after the Requero amendment to just engage in other adult or potentially risky activities. I, I, maybe it, it, you know, the definition of adult hasn't changed, but the way I read this, the, the statement now now I think it does have that kind of, of, of sexual connotation, or it, it's more likely to have that connotation in the mind of the reader um, with the, the sentence as it now reads. So I think that I, I, I think I oppose the amendment at this point, though I agree that age restricted is not great language. Okay, I have a potentially uncomfortable question to ask, and it's up to the committee to decide. Is it the committee's position that people who go to war shouldn't be presumed to be able to consent to sexual activities? I, I certainly just, don't think that. And my concern is not that, that, that about th that we don't think people can consent to sex. I think it just reads kind of, it, it changes the definition of adult. It, it sort of changes the connotation of the word adult in the sentence. And it's, it so in doesn't other words, do uh, what I think it was you're doing. Going, I think you're saying it, it goes a little boom, chicka, wow, wow. Yeah, maybe something like that. <laughs> I, I don't know. It just, it just doesn't read the same as it would have before the Requero Amendment. I understand. Mm. We've reached Mr. that portion Brayman. of the meeting. <laughs> we have. Um, Mr. Brayman. <laughs> uh, does it help, would it help at all to switch to engage in other potentially risky or adult activities? Would it, the positioning of the two help at all? Well, it wouldn't be in order at this time, though I'll allow you to ask the committee if that's something they would be open to at the point it is in order, so to just to save time. Well, I'm more interested in asking Matt Chulko <laughs> if, okay. if that improves it at all. If it doesn't, it's not worth discussing. I, I, I think it does improve it in my mind, but I don't know, we're getting down into like such little stuff. It's, it's hard for me to really judge it fairly, you know? 
we could we could adopt it and then change it a little bit later on. <laughs> I mean, I, I'd like to see this get out into the into the survey is one of the main reasons why I was hoping we could get done with this tonight. Madam well, Chair. We, do, we do have one more meeting before the survey. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, Mr. Secretary. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I think even if we flip it, I'm still of the mindset of just having that word there that I really don't want to have any connotations of that discussion of the age, uh, age of consent. To me, that's a real non-starter. And um, while I agree with Mr. Chokel, maybe age restricted isn't really the best language. I think it gets across. I think I thought I got across the the point that Mr. Brayman was trying to get across with the original motion, and I do agree with 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 him as well. I do. I, I hope we do. Yeah, we've got twenty minutes. I hope we do get to a vote on this uh, by the end of the night. Thank you. Okay, um, Mr. Brayman, is is your hand up as a legacy? Legacy, sorry. Okay, Mr. Dempsey. Yes, I, uh, I certainly don't want to have the perfect be the enemy of the good, so I'll vote on this as is. Um, but I, I did provide an alternative. I, I think in the, in the spirit of not making, I did. I agree with the sentiment expressed earlier that uh, age of consent should should basically be, or or age um, should not be a, a factor in the in the conversation. So I, I wanted to kind of reword this. I did put something in the chat that I think helps articulate this and. and using the words such as um, restricted by government due to their age, I think allows us to kind of have our cake and eat it too. But I wanted to open this up for the conversation to see if others agree with that. Well, at this point, we are two levels deep in amendment. So I think we do need to start disposing of some of these amendments um, before going off into other potential language. Um, and it seemed to me, correct me if I'm wrong, you rewrote the whole plank in the chat is, or was there another? No, I, I added, I added a, a, a sentence at the beginning and I changed the end, but I was oh. just trying to find a way of making it work that allowed for the commentary that was expressed earlier. Okay. So for just for one second, disregarding the additional first sentence, um, what you are saying is if adult is voted down, something the, the committee might consider is and engage in other quote unquote risky activities currently restricted by the government due to their age. Correct. Okay, thank you. Um, but where we are at right now um, is voting on whether or not to, to delete age restricted and insert adult. Um, I can tell there's objection to that. So um, unless there's further debate, we will go to a roll call vote when the secretary is ready. Oh, sorry, I was on mute. All righty, we will start with Mark Raymond. Aye. Okay. Ted Brown. Nay. And Joe Bronhart. Abstain. Sean Dempsey. Nay. Matt Choco. Nay. Ken Matz. Aye. That was an aye? That's correct. Okay. Josh McHose. Nay. Luke Enzer. Abstain. Okay. Omar Recruit will vote nay. Uh, Mike Seebeck. Oh, we may have lost Mr. Seebeck, right? Right, so it's Mr. Cachado. Yeah, Mr. Cachado, yes. Nay. Okay, Curry Taylor. Aye. John Thompson. Nay. Bow, chicka, bow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Madam Chair. Uh, hold on, let me switch the sheet here. Did I miss anyone? I'm showing three in favor, seven opposed, and two express abstentions at 1042. Okay, so adult um, being put in instead of age restricted has failed. So we are back to age restricted. Mr. Choco. So it is now in order for me to offer 
an amendment that is essentially the thing that uh, Sean Dempsey was proposing in chat. Is that correct? It is. Um, let me roll back up. Well, so, so just to be clear, I'm going to make one small change to his his stuff. So we don't want to take that word for word. OK, and uh, you're not dealing with that first sentence, are you? You're just talking. No, about I'm going to I'll okay. put it in chat right here. Give me just a second. OK, we're just waiting for Mr. Choco to put in chat. Okay, he's not adding that first sentence, Mr. Secretary. So I, uh, okay, I'm I'm waiting to see what he's okay. Okay. Let me it's see. Just, chat now. Yeah, he just would like to strike. Um okay. other I'm, I'm not sure whether I I'm not sure about those quotes around risky. I left them in there, but I'm not sure that it's it's I mean, I don't know. They're there for now. Okay, so I know we can pick and choose and say this word really isn't being stricken and, 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 and the, the cleanest way to do it is to say you're striking the entire phrase and inserting the whole other phrase even if there are some words that are still in common because I noticed somebody had said that earlier. So what Mr. Choco is proposing is striking and engage in other age restricted or potentially activities and instead insert and engage in other quote unquote, risky activities currently restricted by government due to age. Do you have that, Mr. Secretary? Yeah, we're adding this to cannabis risky activities right here. He's keeping and engage in other right before risky. Okay, what are we striking? We're just, we're taking out that one phrase and putting in this phrase, rather than going, we're keeping this word, taking out this word. It's just okay. cleaner to do it that way. I gotcha. I'm gonna do it this way then. Um, strike. Okay, uh, Mr. Choco, did you wish to speak to this? Yeah, I just, I think it reads a little better. Okay, thank you. Would anyone else like to speak to the amendment? I know the secretary is still catching up. Um, I'll, I'll read again. Oh, yeah, he ha he's highlighting it right there. That is the, the alternative phrasing that Mr. Choco um, has presented as suggested by Mr. Dempsey. Mr. Dempsey. You are muted, Mr. Dempsey. Thank you. I would like to speak in affirmative of this. Uh, I feel like adding the word, or having the word age restrictive in any of our language is a visceral response to a lot of libertarians. And this allows us to get to the heart of the matter is that government is restricting us, not some intrinsic age that is imposed upon humanity by nature. Okay, thank you. Mr. Cachado? Uh, yes, I have a amendment. Okay. Like to move to strike the word risky. Okay, Mr. Cachado is moving to strike the word risky. Would you like to speak to that amendment? Uh, yes, briefly. Um, I don't, I think it reads better without, uh, the word, obviously. Um, uh, I, I think any activities, I, I don't know why we have to restrict it to risky. I don't see what that adds. Um, so I definitely could be missing something, but, um, I guess I don't have much commentary. Thanks. Okay, Mr. Choco. 
So I agree with what Clayton just said, but I oppose removing the word risky because we just spent a bunch of time voting risky into the blank, uh, into the proposal a minute ago. So it seems like people want it there. Madam Chair, point of information or yes, information. Are, are, are we on the second level of amendment right now with the Choco amendment? Yes. No, 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 we're not. We're on the second level amendment with the. Wait, hold on. We're yeah, on the sec... No, that's the first level. Um... Wait. The first on. level, the first amendment was Mr. Choco. Then, then me. And Mr. Taylor. Wait, no, no, hold, hold on. Hold on. Give, give me one moment to think and please scroll down. Okay. No, we we were left with one level of amendment being no, we were left with the original proposal being an engage and other age restricted adult or potentially restricted restrictive activities. Wait, hold on. I am now a little bit lost. One moment. I'm trying to bring the text a little closer. Okay. We adopted and engage in other age restricted or potentially that was adopted. So that became part of the amendment. Then Mr. Taylor wanted to remove age restricted, which failed. So we were then still left with, which became part of the primary amendment, engage in other risky activities I mean, excuse me, um, engage in other age restricted adult. No, because that is was part of the original proposal at this point. So engage in other risky activities currently restricted by government due to due to age is a first level amendment. And Mr. Cachado's removal of risky is the second level because we had already passed and engage in other age restricted adult or potentially um, risky activities that had already passed. We are on the second level of amendment. Pardon me, Madam Secretary, did, did Mr. Cholko essentially bring up, up a point of order that we've already uh, voted on the, the question of including the word risky? No, he made a commentary. It wasn't a point of order. I would like to bring up a point of order that we've We've already sort of voted to keep the word risky in there. And the word, is... okay, I will rule that not well taken and I will explain why. Um, the word risky hadn't been voted on by itself. It had been voted on as part of a larger phraseology. Um, if it had been voted on by itself rather than as part of the larger phraseology, I would say it is revisiting a question that was already decided, but the question that was already decided was a longer phrase. I think removing the word by itself makes it essentially a new question. That's all I, I will say to my ruling. So right now then, um, would you care to appeal that no, ruling? No. Okay. Um, we are at now, Mr. Choco. Um, I don't know, you might I, have been done. I think I had something to say, but I forgot what it is, so. Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Secretary. We are keeping the quotes around risky. Well, right, um, we were, if it stays in. Okay. Mr. Dempsey. Can we call the question? I, I feel ready to vote. Um, we're. At, Unfortunately, on committees, you are not permitted to call the question. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, don't apologize. Everyone gets, uh, it just gets to a point where everyone's done talking or the chair starts going, this is getting um, dilatory. 
which I think we are starting to get to that point. Um, is there any further debate on simply the amendment of removing the word risky? Hearing none, is there any objection to removing the word risky? I believe there is by Mr. Cholko. Yes, objection. Okay, there is objection from multiple persons. Um, Mr. Secretary, whenever you are ready, and just so people know, we are at 8.53, but as we get, that's mountain time, um, as we get to the end, there, a motion to extend is always in order, um, but let's get to this vote. Okay, so we're Mr. Brayman. Nay. So that's, that's a vote to keep the word risky, right? Right. right. A, vote, a no vote keeps risky, a yes vote removes it. Okay, uh, Ted Brown. Aye. Joe Brungart. Yes. John Dempsey. Aye. Matt Choco. Aye. Ken Matz. <laughs> Ken. Aye. Okay, Josh McHose. Nay. Okay, that sounded like a nay. Luke Enzer. Abstain. Uh, Omar Rapur will vote nay. Uh, Mike Seebeck. He's no, it's, it's oh, Mr. Right. Mr. Cachado. I, I, I keep forgetting. Mr. Cachado, I'm sorry. Aye. Curry Taylor. Aye. John Thompson. Aye. Okay, Madam Chair, I am showing here just quickly. Did I miss anyone? I got eight in favor, three opposed, and one express abstention at 10.55. And Mr. Choco is very amused. Um, the word risky has been removed. So where we are at right now is whether or not um, we shall strike and engage in other age-restricted adult or potentially risky activities and instead insert, engage in other activities currently restricted by government due to age. Is there any further debate on that amendment? Is there any objection to that amendment? Okay, seeing none, that amendment passes. We are back to the primary, which would now, oh, Mr. Cachado? Uh, yes, I just wanted to speak on the primary when you're ready. Okay, um, the primary would read, once individuals are presumed to have adequate judgment to vote and serve on a jury or in the military, they should also be presumed to have sufficient judgment to decide their own purchase and use of alcohol, tobacco, firearms, cannabis, and engage in other activities currently restricted by government due to age. Mr. Cachado. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I like the idea of the main motion. Um, the, the adequate judgment part, but as it reads right now, um, <clears throat> one would ask adequate, adequate judgment of, of, of who? And in this case, we are comparing it to uh, voting, serving on a jury, and being in the military, which are all uh, state-controlled and defined actions. Um, and not only that, the the state can change those, um, can change its judgment at any time. Um, so I, I mean, th this fundamentally does get down to the the, the presumption of age. Um, and I'm thinking back to what I what I think on it and. Bob Murphy, I think it's been a little bit, but he, I think his idea was thinking about this as a conservatorship, um, uh, you know, being like a child parent relationship. Um, and they always have the rights, but they're not necessarily able to, to express them. Um, uh, another issue that with this is that um, the activities may not be appropriate at the same age, right? Like um, someone with a firearm and someone drinking alcohol, I, I could see those being, they could be the same age. Um, you know, it, it varies by person. So 
fundamentally, I do agree that there's probably a generally accepted age range and it should be determined. It has to be, there is no fundamental age, right? Like 18 isn't the number, 17 isn't, isn't the number, you know, it's different for different people. Um, it, it, I do think ultimately, I'm not a fan of this, but my position is it has to be determined by the wider society. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place, but there's a lot that goes in. But I see a lot of thoughts expressed in this one plank. Um, uh, but but my my real current uh, opposition is because of those the the voting the serving on a jury in the military that's my current um, I, I, I agree with the concept of, as a whole for the adequate judgment but the um, those comparisons especially uh, I, I don't see them being in a, a good improvement to our platform uh, thanks okay. Um, I will note for the committee that we are at 8.58. Um, I'm gonna hear from Mr. Dempsey and unless there is a motion to extend, we are going to be automatically adjourned. Mr. Dempsey. Okay, looks like he put his hand down, Mr. Cholko. Uh, move to extend five minutes because I think we're about to vote. Is there any objection to extending for five minutes? Hearing none, is there any further debate on this plank? I can tell there is objection because Mr. Cachado had expressed it. Mr. Secretary, if we could do a call of the roll. Uh, and what we are voting on is a yes vote. We'll add in, and the title kind of is off the screen right now, but I believe it was adult rights and responsibilities, section 1.X, once individuals are presumed to have adequate judgment to vote and serve on a jury, jury or in the military, they should also be presumed to have sufficient judgment to decide their own purchase and use of alcohol, tobacco, firearms, cannabis, and engage in other activities currently restricted by government due to age. A yes vote would adopt this as the committee's proposal. A no vote would not adopt it. And next meeting will, in either event, we will move on to the next agenda item. Ma Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Um, Choco. If we pass this, what would need to happen for us to change the title of the plank? It would be a motion to reconsider um, but a motion to reconsider has to be made by somebody who was not on the losing side. Um, okay. However, I tend to want to accommodate the committee and I usually don't vote. If I don't vote and somebody asks me to make a motion to reconsider on their behalf, um, the title of the plank, I will sponsor that in order to facilitate the, a discussion. But that is the title right now that we are voting on. Madam Chair, quick question. Yes. Um, the where where it would go, I, I missed that. One point what? X. We haven't decided where in section. Okay, one so we'll do it at the next meeting. That'll be the first business of order, right? Uh, right. no, it will be before we do our report. There's others that we need to decide ordering on. Right now, we're adopting okay. it as one point X. Copy that. Okay, so I'm ready to call roll when you are. Oh, go right ahead. Okay. Uh. Mark Raymond. Aye. Ted Brown. Aye. Joe Brunhart. No. John Dempsey. Aye. Matt Toko. Aye. Ken Matz. Aye. Josh McHose. Not seeing, not hearing. I'll come back. Oh, here we go. I missed that, Josh. You said aye. Okay. Thank you. Luke Enzer. Hi. Omar Curl. I'm going to pass for a moment. Uh, Clinton Cachado. Nay. Curry Taylor. Aye. John Thompson. 
Aye. All right, coming back to myself. Uh, I'll vote I. Uh, let me get this on screen. We're about to head out. Madam Chair, I am showing. Did I miss anyone? Got 12 votes here. Uh, if I didn't miss anyone, I have 10 in favor and two opposed at 11. .03. Okay. Congratulations, everyone. Um, this passes. Just a couple announcements. I will then see everyone tomorrow, hopefully, for a town hall. Um, please spread it on your social media. National is supposed to send out an email, and I hope that they do. Remember on this, with the concerns that people have had, such as Mr. Cachado, that minority reports would be in order that would maybe nuance things a little bit differently. Um, and lastly, just a point of parliamentary knowledge. Um, I keep remember forgetting to bring this up. It's something that every meeting gets wrong, um, but it, it does confuse the secretary that actually in voting, the proper terminology is I and no, because I and nay sound a lot alike. Um, everyone gets this wrong <laughs> everywhere. I don't know where I and nay have ever come into the picture, but it is I and no. And I think Mr. Ruffiero's hair will thank you because I hear him at times pausing and wondering whether it's an I or a nay. I will see you all tomorrow. And um, before the meeting tomorrow, I will have updated the um, master list so that we can share that with the members. We will be starting next time we meet, which is, I believe the 11th. Am I correct, Mr. Secretary? Uh... So that's a regular meeting, not, not a town hall. I believe it's the 11th, and we will be starting with Mr. Um, Rakiro's proposal 3.6 on representative government. And I I, everyone... I'm bringing up the, the timeline yeah. here because you have it on the timeline correctly. So, yeah, 411. Yeah, because 47 is a town hall, so 411. Okay. Which is and that's a okay. different night than we normally do. Yeah, so, 411 is a Monday. Is a Monday. Yes. And um, hopefully Mr. Nana will be able to make it. I will send him a reminder that for once we're not doing it on a Thursday. Um, so I will see you all on Monday. Um, please, I will send out the registration link agenda and all of that. Um, thank you very much. And I hope you have an awesome evening. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Adjourned at, sorry, for the record, 9.05. Yes. Thank you. Good, night. Good evening.